everybody, and welcome to another episode of Intuitive Insights. My name is Dr. Yolanda Dukes, and I have an amazing guest for you guys today who currently resides in France. Her name is Diana Allen. She's a shamanic healer as well as a musician and an artist who's going to sing my soul song today. Hi, Diana. How are you? Oh, hi, Yolanda. Thank you for inviting me on your program. Oh, I and, so appreciate you. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. That's so sweet. That's so sweet. So I live in the south of France. It's absolutely beautiful. And if anybody would like to come and visit, I have a wonderful guest room in an apartment that was built, I believe, in the in 1750. Oh, wow. And it has 24 ceilings, marble fireplaces, all the deco stuff on the ceiling. And it's so stunning. Wow. I, one of the first languages I learned, well, of course, English is my mother language, but I learned French because I just knew I was going to live in France one day. I was just so excited as a teenager, but it didn't develop for me that way. Well, I learned French as a teenager and I have lived in many different places around the world and yet France kept calling me back, calling me so now in 2014, I moved here permanently. Wow. Was that an easy transition for you to just pick up and leave? Well, I had been living in Mexico in San Miguel de Allende. So I moved from there and went back, well, went to Canada and applied for a cart to Long Sejour, went to Mexico, packed my stuff up, and moved to France. So you got. So French citizenship through Canada? No. no. I have called a titre de séjour and I renew it every year. Ah. It's only good for one year. So. Okay. And, and what does that translate into? Oh, that's a good question. Titre is, uh, I don't know what that is. Du séjour is for the day. For the day, yeah. But it's for a year. Okay. For a year. But anyway, let's not talk about that. Let's talk about art. Yes, yes. And the sounds that I'm going to bring through for you today, because that's really fun. Yes. Now, many, many years ago in school, I hated art. I couldn't draw. I couldn't do anything. And then I was living in England. I lived there for three years at one point in time and trained with a Celtic shaman and a Russian shaman for four to three years. And one woman that I was living with, she was a, an artist. And she was giving some lessons. So I thought, oh, well, I'll go have a lesson. Well, we were to draw a box with charcoal. And all she kept doing was telling me how I was doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I know, see, I know it. I am not an artist. And this is why I hated it. So fast forward to I'm living in Hawaii and I was at the beach with one of my friends. She was a wonderful artist. Her father was, his art was even hung in art galleries. So he was a, an accomplished artist. And I would go to the beach with her and I would paint and I didn't really like anything that I painted. And, and I had also, I play the piano. I bring through a person's soul song on the piano. Mm -hmm. So I had recorded some CDs and I went to my house one day with one of my friends who was fixing a lamp for me. And while he was doing that, I decided I'd put on my music and get out my things. So I did. And then the magic happened. Mm -hmm. And what I painted, it looked like Merlin riding on a dragon. Oh, wow. Oh, here's, here's the magic again because I recognize that energy when it comes through me. I have been singing for a very long time, singing for people and also singing during the workshops that I do because the songs are specific for the person, for the healing. Mm -hmm. So I stayed up all night and painted. And so that started the whole painting thing. So now, the person who never thought I would be an artist, I have had art exhibits in Hawaii and in San Francisco and in Vancouver. Wow. And 
And I have just finished, actually, I just mailed it today, a soul painting for a client in British Columbia. So how exactly did you figure this out, that, that you could interpret the vibrations of a soul? Well, go back 30 years when I'm facilitating a workshop with a group of women. And lots of times women have their throat chakras really closed down. Mm -hmm. So in this workshop, I suggested to the women that they sing. And there wasn't any do, do, re, mi. It was just sing. And my First Nations friend, my native Canadian Indian friend, was sitting next to me. And when we finished singing, she said to me, the song you were singing, my Kiao, my grandmother, used to sing that song to me. And I looked at her and I thought, well, not any song that I know. And she was staying from, with me for the weekend and she really hadn't completed with her grandmother. And so I said, well, if you want, I'll sing to you. So I did and she cried and cried and cried. And then I realized that I could actually sing a person's song for them. And so not as evolved as I am now, and now I can actually put it into words more than I could before. What I realized my gift is to be able to go to the quantum energy field, read a person's energy, and either transpose it into sound through my voice, or the piano or into a painting wow. so it is so cool i feel that i am i am so blessed well let me i want to share something with you because it ties into your gift so incredibly uniquely when i was having my awakening experience i went to the planet sirius and someone who identified as my mother came and although i cannot remember the melody she was singing to me my soul song but i can't remember the melody i just know that it was something profound and something beautiful and that's all i know and now here you are <laughs> well what i realize also is the person's soul song because our souls evolve that's yes. what we're here to do is to evolve the soul and I don't have a recall. So if, when I sing for you, if tomorrow you phone me or email me and said, could you sing me that song again? I would say no. Yeah, it it's just not goes there. there. I don't. I, yeah. Yeah. I can totally understand that. Okay. We a little bit of delay there. Okay. We're good. So now is there a delay when I'm speaking? Because I don't want there to be a delay when I'm singing. That would be kind of weird. It should be okay. I found that sometimes when, even when it goes down a little bit, the recording seems to come out just fine. Okay, well, we can play with the energy anyway. I can just go. Yes. <laughs> Tell it to cooperate for us today. Okay, so let's begin yeah. and I will sing your soul song and it is like this. Well, well, So when you meet somebody, you hear something like that? No. I don't, I don't, because I don't hear it before I sing it. Ah, okay. Yeah, no, I don't hear the music 
before I play it. My hand, I close my eyes with, on the piano and my hands move on their own. So you are truly in an instrument for the divine. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That was so that cool? beautiful. Wow. Well, the height of the ceilings help here too because there's, there's quite a resonance. Yeah. Wow. I can see why you picked it. <laughs> Definitely. Just by the way it sounds. That is incredible. You've just led such an interesting life. Wow. I was married for 27 years in Canada. And I, at the beginning of the 90s, I had a 6,000 square foot healing center called the Expanded Awareness Center. Oh, okay. And this is in basically a heap town of 60,000 people where guys drive around with their trucks with the guns in the back because they're going hunting. Mm -hmm. So here we have this center with a float tank from California and a group room and a little cafe and a store and men and women's showers and an aromatherapy sauna and treatment rooms and yeah. And then, so then it came time to close that mm -hmm. and my husband and I thought I was going to travel for a year and one year turned into seven. Wow. Many, many amazing experiences. It sounds like it. So have you, have you done um, soul music for, let's uh, say, any famous people? <laughs> um, no. Okay. Other than you. <laughs> I'm far from famous. I'm far from it. I'm just... Oh, okay. I'm just doing something like these really interesting. So, so what would be, do you have for me, like what would the words to, to what you saying? Sometimes you get wording, you said? No. Oh, no, there are no words. Oh, okay. I never have, no. I don't have words. I don't have a call. Yeah. Wow. Just, I open and I can do this anywhere, anytime. It's not that I have to meditate beforehand or get myself into a certain space. Or I've been doing it for so long that it's part. It's definitely part of me. And it's very. Um, what's the word? I want to say it sounds very native. It's like you know the things that you hear in the movies, like a native uh, dance calling something. Ah, but we are calling something with our vibration now, aren't we? Oh, yes. wow. And also, I have a great-grandmother who is full-blooded Cherokee who walked the Trail of Tears, which I only found out about a couple of years ago because I'm adopted. Okay. And so the part of me that does sound like an Indian, I think, has some kind of connection there. Mm -hmm. And then when I drum and sing, you would think the whole nation is coming. Oh, wow. yes. That's beautiful. So how does, how does the painting come in? Well, the painting came, let's see, the sound came first, then the painting, and then the music. Okay. So the painting was I realized that if I can sing a person's soul song for them, then I could paint it. And then I could also play it on the piano. Oh, and there's such a funny story of the very first time I ever played the piano in mm -hmm. public. Okay. On the island, island of Kauai. And I had lived there before. So I knew that there was a grand piano in a restaurant, in an Italian restaurant. So I phoned the restaurant and said, do you think that I could come and play your piano and bring my friends? And they said, yes. Now, they never heard me play the piano. I didn't go there to audition or whatever you call it. So I show up and the maitre d' said, all right, well, you can have a break. And you can have a glass of wine at a certain time. And I must have given him a very strange look. And he said, 
well, didn't the woman who hired you tell you all this? I said, <laughs> hired me? Nobody hired me. I'm here for fun to play for my friends. <laughs> and so I started playing. Now, I've never played in public. And I play all the white keys together. Mm -hmm. And then I play all the black keys together. Okay. So it's a very different way of playing also. And so one of my friends came up to me while I was playing the piano because I can play and talk. It's from a different part of my brain. Mm -hmm. And she said, how can you be playing the piano and talking to me and you don't even know what you're playing? Oh, and you're talking to me at the same time. I said, you're surprised? You want to be in this body. <laughs> so, so then my friends laughed wow. and and asked me if I could play a song for his wife. And I said, oh, but I can't play anything that you've ever heard before. And he said, oh, no, no, what you're playing is, that's very nice. So I did, and then I thought, oh, I can play a person's song. Wow. So that's what I'm doing. So I started facilitating soul song concerts and vibrational healing meetings in different places around the world. And I saw on your website that you still offer um, the uh, ringtone. Oh, yeah, I, I still do that. You know, people didn't really think that was a great idea. I think it's a I wonderful it idea, personally. <laughs> so let's tell your audience what this is. Maybe I can drum up a little bit of business. Yeah, definitely. Yes, explain. So what I would do is that I would play your, and I will give this to you as a gift also, record it on my iPad later. Oh, thank you. So, oh, you're welcome, you're welcome. So what it is, is that I would record your soul song that would be 30 seconds or something, mm -hmm. and then send it to you, and you could download it as a ringtone. So that whenever your phone rings, instead of whatever you have on your phone now, you would hear the tone, your own vibration, with the re remembrance of your connection to, to spirit. Wow. Yes, I definitely want that. I want the ringtone. Yes. Yes. <laughs> It's funny because I never bother to change my ringtone ever. Uh, okay. So I also I have a keyboard. Mm -hmm. Someday I will have a baby grand piano. At the moment I have a keyboard. Mm -hmm. And the the one thing about the keyboard is that it is tuned to 432 hertz do you know the difference there's 440 and there's 432 i have heard and i know a little bit but could you explain 432 the so the magician magicians the magicians <laughs> the magical musicians of the world are tuned to 432 hertz Okay. And so a lot of the other music is, is more constrictive, more controlling mm -hmm. than it is at 40. So I guess what we want to so convey is that everything has a frequency. Having a, that everything has a frequency. And the music and that tends to be played on the radio is at a frequency that's a little bit more constrictive, whereas music recorded at 432 is more freeing. Is that better? Okay. Yeah, that's very good. Yeah, an easy way to explain it. That is incredibly beautiful. So what would you say to a young person out there who's just coming into their gifts and they are feeling a little lost and confused? Call me. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. I, I do sessions over, over the internet, either on Zoom or on Skype. Okay. And I really believe that it's time to be even more of a mentor yes. to young people coming up. I had spoke with a woman, a young woman who was 36 the other day about 
intergenerational trauma. Mm -hmm. And she is from one of the First Nations bands in Northern British Columbia. And so lots and lots of trauma. And so she realizes the importance of, of connecting with an elder. I have a lot of wisdom that I can pass down mm -hmm. and therefore assist people perhaps not to fall into the same kind of places where I have been. Mm -hmm. And from my experience, assist them in making different choices because everything is a choice that we do. Yes, and I think understanding, I mean, I used to have, well, my intuition used to kick in. I thought, oh, this is just a silly thing and it's more bothersome than it was helpful until yeah. I got into the right niche for me where you, I need to be intuitive in order to help people. So yeah, if you're feeling as though your gift is useless, you're not using it right. <laughs> Trust me, that comes from experience. Yes, well. So if somebody uh, wants to schedule with you, the main thing you do would be what? The main thing that I do is right now I'm working with autistic children. Okay. Children who are nonverbal. So mm -hmm. these are the children before seven years old, but uh, vaccine damaged children. Uh, okay. And I'm working with a young man on the Isle of Man who has made absolutely incredible strides with the method that I use because I work with the DNA. Mm -hmm. So, and, um, well, I guess I can be sort of, I, I don't fit into the box, as you probably know, <laughs> and never out of the box. What box? <laughs> There's no sign. Yeah, box. no, no, can't find a box, no. <laughs> so, and so what I've been doing with him is having him visualize what's happening in his brain so that the adjuvants from the vaccines can be released. And then yesterday I worked with a woman in Hawaii who's had three concussions from car accidents. So going in, she went into her brain and we cleared out a whole lot of old stuff and turned the lights back on. Wow. And how long, how long does a session like that take? I usually work in one and a half hour sessions, one and a half to two hours. And those can be done by distance as well? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yes. The very first time that I realized that I could feel the energy from the DNA leaving a person's body when I was over the internet. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of surprised that that would happen. But, and because there is no time, there's no space. There's, I can feel your energy, you can feel my energy. Exactly. So we're working with people to release from the DNA is not band-aid therapy. So it's I guess what, we're, what I would interject here is why that works, because all of us that work in the quantum field, it's a timeless field to be working in. So even when I do a QHHT session, they might feel like they were only laying there for 10 minutes when in all actuality an hour or two hours have passed by. And it's the same thing. That's why someone can do it by distance because it's your consent and their willingness to go into the quantum field for, on your behalf to find the information that you want and that happens in the now. That is wonderful. Well, we are about out of time. Okay, just one thing. I do teach my clients to be your own, be their own healer. Yes. I'm only the, ass the assistant. Yes, and I consider it the same way. Once you have that feeling, you can always recall that because now you have it with you. Yeah, I wouldn't quite put it like that, but yes. But how would you put it? Tell me. Share. So once you have what feeling? That feeling of being in the midst of quantum, feeling that spirit has worked through you. Oh, okay. So yes, I have that all the time. That's very true. Yes. And, and to assist my clients, if that is their path to, to feel that also, yeah. Yes. 
That's awesome. Well, thank you so very, very much. And if people want to reach you, how would they reach you? So they can send me an email, diana.allen138 at gmail.com or quantum DNA healing at gmail.com. Okay, yeah. I will also post her links in the description box for everybody that wants to inquire more about uh, Diana Allen's uh, healing methods. One quick thing, I do have these prints that are available for sale. I don't know if there's too much glare there. Uh, it's a little glare, yeah. Yeah, so that is on also on the box that you have mm -hmm. to, to what? For the, for the beginning of this session okay. to, to introduce me this boat, this print of the painting of ancient Lemuria is there. So if people yes. wanted to have a look. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. So the, the, yeah. the picture that's posted in her intro is a painting of Lemuria. Wow. That's right. Okay. And how did you get the, the art? Pardon? I mean, is it like the energy of what was? Yeah, the energy of ancient Lemuria. Wow. The other is the gold one is the 888 Lion's Gate portal opening, which happens every year, August the 8th. Ah. Is it like another? And that's on the 88. Eight. Pardon? Is that, a, it's not another eight, eight. solstice. The no, Lion's it's Gate. Eight, eight. It's the Lion's Gate portal opening, and it happens every year. Okay. I don't know anything about that one. Oh, okay. Well. Well, maybe that'll be for my next talk. I'll find somebody to, to interview about the Lion's Gate. <laughs> okay. okay, everybody. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to another episode of Intuitive Insights. Thank my guest, Diana Allen. You are absolutely inspirational. And thank you so much for the beautiful gift of my soul song. You're welcome. You're Bye, welcome. everybody. Bye. Au revoir.